One of the most exciting fish you can catch in the state of Utah is the rare, elusive, and powerful tiger muskie. The tiger muskie is a fast-growing, carnivorous fish that can grow longer than 40 inches, and some few even make it past 50 inches in the state of Utah. But if you're going to fish for these fish, you need to be prepared. As big and powerful as tiger muskie may seem, they need to be handled with care if you hope to release them unharmed. A while back I did a video called How to Catch and Release Trout Without Accidentally Killing Them. In that video I talk about how the successful release of a trout is a lot more complicated than you may think. Tiger muskie are no different and take a lot of extra care in order to ensure a successful release. The last thing we want to do is catch a beautiful tiger muskie and then stress it to the point that when we release it, it swims away only to die a few minutes later. Unfortunately, I'm no expert on catching and releasing tiger muskie, but fortunately, I know someone who is. Braxton Bolton has caught and released more muskie than anyone I know. So recently I decided to meet up with him and have him share his knowledge on how to safely catch and release the fish of 10,000 casts. Try to get him safe to the net quickly, keep him in the water as much as possible. I'd suggest making sure you have a net to land them and then keeping them in the net um, while they revive a little bit while you remove the hook. And then you can hurry and take your quick little glory shot. Make sure the cameras are all ready before you pull it out of the water so it, it um, minimizes the amount of time that it's out of the water. Just because the muskie swims away, that doesn't mean it's okay. Um, make sure you revive that fish before you release it. So um, don't just toss it back in the water and hope that everything is well. Hold on to it for a while and let it let it catch its breath because it just fought for its life. Don't hold it vertically. Hold it horizontally. Support that belly. If you um, if you don't support the belly, what's going to happen is the guts have so much pressure that they're going to kill that fish, and you don't want to do that, especially with these fish that cost so much to put into our, our bodies of water here. Of all the muskie handling tips out there, the ones that stand out to me the most are first, just like Braxton explained, keep the fish in the water as much as possible. A good rule of thumb is to avoid holding any fish out of the water for longer than 30 seconds at a time. And of course, it's always a good idea to catch and release the fish as quickly as possible. Second, avoid anything that will remove the protective slime coating on a muskie. Using a rubber net and wetting your hands before touching the fish are always great fish handling. Third, be gentle with the fish. Try to hold it in the most natural position possible. These fish are heavy and not built to hang out of the water or roll around on the bank. And finally, use the right gear. For muskie in particular, the right gear is really important. Since I was fishing with Braxton, I decided I would ask him his opinion on the gear he thinks you need to start fishing for muskie. I included a list of all the gear we talked about in the description below this video. For example, pliers for muskie are a must. The longer, the better. A muskie's teeth can really tear up your hand and muskie lures are big, expensive, and harmful if left inside the fish's mouth, so you don't want to just cut the line. A pair of long pliers can be really helpful to save your lure, your hand, and the fish. You'll need at least a medium heavy rod. If you're planning to target big fish, it's probably not a bad idea to have a rod that can handle lures up to 8 ounces. It's really important to have a net because it gives a place for the fish to recuperate where it won't injure itself as you prepare to release it. Braxton also stressed the importance of having a wire leader because some of those bigger fish can shred through a fishing line pretty easily. Which is another reason to pair your steel leader with 75 to 80 pound braided line. Braxton also talked about having a good reliable reel is important, but he didn't seem to be convinced that you need to go out and buy a super expensive reel.
Thank you for watching this video. We hope that after watching the video, you feel prepared for the day you finally meet the fish of 10,000 casts. And if you're still watching, don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to support the Utah Fishing Channel on social media, then you can find links to our pages in the description below this video.